Sometimes when you get data from other sources, you have got numbers that should have leading zeros and usually they are code type numbers. We have got some entries in column B and we really want them to look like how they appear in column C right now. We can do this with a function called text equal text and I'm using it here on cell A2. So let's pick up the data from cell B2 comma and notice the pop-up tip below. It says format text. We want to format this as if it were a number. If you are familiar with formatting techniques and if you have worked at the character level in setting up formats, zero character you would know represents a number. Triple zero, zero zero or six zeros. We want this to be displayed as a six character number. Zeros are like placeholders for numbers. So the answer we get here is what we would want. Make the column a little bit wider so we can see that. That's all we are doing. Take the value that's in B2, format it to coincide with this layout and it will automatically make that entry be right aligned and then put in the leading zeros. Copy this down the column and things are looking the way we would want them to. In other words, this is the desired look and that's what we are seeing over in column A. All these are the same, same format and now we might try this over in column D. So I will simply drag one of these over here with the control key and here uh, we are trying to do that with the data to the right and that's looking pretty good. But do notice that in the list here, some of the entries have letters in them. So look what happens here when we copy this down the column. It just does not work in those cases. And maybe it is a situation where these code numbers, these ID numbers, whatever they are, do involve letters. How can we work around this somehow? Imagine we might have tons of data looking like this. We want them to look like what we see right here with the leading zeros. And regardless whether there are numbers or letters in there, so we need to show you a few other functions in the meantime to get there. First of all, seemingly out of nowhere, but uh, this is related, is a function called repeat. It's actually REPT. Rept function says, I have got some data somewhere. Maybe it's the it's this X right here. I want to repeat that so many times, five times, Okay, looks like this. It could be any character, could be a symbol, and I could put the asterisk up there maybe. This is what we get. And we could repeat it any number of times. So that seemingly is not related, but it is. Now, let's talk about this idea. We want to be able to add zeros here, leading zeros, depending upon the length of these. Now, how do we know what the length of the information is? Here is a function called len meaning length. What's the length of this data right here over in cell E2? You probably guessed already. It's 3 and the next one is 5 and so on and so on. So there are the various lengths that we see for each one of these. Equal length. Now how many zeros do we need to add if we have got 3 characters? How many leading zeros? We need to add 3. And what if it is 5 characters? We need to add 1. And if it is 4 characters, we need to add 2. The number of zeros that we need to add is 6 minus this entry. So 6 minus 4 is 2. We need two zeros there. This is 5 characters long. So 6 minus 5 is 1. So what if we add to this length number 6 minus? This is how many zeros we will need to add. Copy down the column. We need to add one zero there. 2, 3. So this is how many zeros we have to add. Now remember, the rept function might come in handy here. What if we were to say rep rept left parenthesis? Let's take the value zero. The character zero is the better way to say it here, comma, and create that many entries of it. We will need a right parenthesis there. We will see it three times. Copy down the column and we have it for the others. Now, we need to combine that uh, with the data that we already have. So we need to take this data here that's the leading zeros and the data that we already have in cell E2. And now we see it there. And as I copy down the column, we will see the others. It might sound a little convoluted. And yet, if you have got thousands and thousands of these and you want to get them into shape quickly, this approach admittedly using perhaps functions you have not seen before, but easy to use. REPT wrapped function, think of the word repeat. Again, it means I have got a character here or somewhere else. 
referred to perhaps by a cell reference by a cell reference or in this case just a character zero i want to repeat this zero how many times and earlier i showed you how we could use the len length function to figure out the length of the information in e2 we subtract six from it that's how many zeros we need so we are talking all these zeros here remember it could be six five four three two one or zero number of zeros and combining that with the data that we already have in column e so what we have created here is the information of course like we saw here this is our desired look so we saw here how to use len function the rep function and then earlier over here to the left we saw how to use the text function a variety of different text functions we have seen here pulling together information separating information and making the information look the way we want it to appear Excel has two companion text functions, one called left, one called right, and they allow us to copy information from the left side of the cell to the right side of the cell. And after showing you how these two functions work, I will also show you the relatively new feature called flash fill, which was introduced in Excel 23, and that for many people will negate the need for these functions. So if we want to pull off, for example, the leftmost information say just the last name from this list we can't do it directly with the left function but we can do it in combination with another function called find if we know where the comma is then we know that we want everything to the left of that let's start with this function called find and you might have seen this in a previous tutorial we are looking for a comma here whatever we are looking for is within commas and now a comma to indicate the second part of the function the second argument which is the location a2 find the comma there for us it's in the sixth position baker b-a-k-e-r comma and we want everything to the left of that so let's use the function called left the left function says i'm looking somewhere i'm looking where a2 comma and now the find answer here the find function gave us the result of six we want to extract one less character than that minus one right parenthesis complete the entry backer and there we see it so we will double click to copy down the column and looks like it is pulling out those names the way we want them to the last names a different situation or in column f we would like to isolate the zip codes there it is the right most character equal right and we are looking in cell f2 zip codes as we can see them here are five characters not the extended zip codes these are five characters so we will complete that entry double click copy down the column and everything looks just great so these are easy to use we can do this with these code numbers here or part numbers here pull off numbers from the left or from the right side and of course there is that companion function called mid that you might have seen in a previous part that allow us to copy information from the middle not necessarily the exact middle but starting in the second character or the third character something like that now all these functions are worthwhile in nearly every case though we have got a better way to do this so i'm going to take out the zip codes here and go back and simply type in the first zip code now i could just press enter or possibly put in another zip code but go to the data tab and there is flash fill click it excel in effect says i see what you have done here i see what you would like to do for the other cells too so when we have consecutive cells like this this feature might work a lot better or certainly faster than what we just saw earlier the function earlier using right was actually pretty fast too so different way to do this and similarly over here in column b now you would think that maybe flash fill would not be this capable but i am going to type in a baker right here press enter and now type h that's the first letter of the last name of the next person and in effect excel says i see what you are doing and it fills it in with the flash fill so even though we have these functions i think the flash fill feature is something you definitely want to take a look at nevertheless from time to time 
The function called left, the function called right, allows us to copy information from the left side of the cell or the right side of the cell. Dear students, in this worksheet called trim, we are looking at some data in column A and we obviously have some problems because of the unnecessary spaces. There are three kinds of unnecessary spaces. The leading spaces, we see that in front of fox here, in front of Watton key, perhaps some others down here. Trailing spaces, they are less of a problem, but even there, when you are trying to match up names from different locations, trailing spaces are big problems. We also have spaces here between the names. A function called trim can handle all of these. Let's first show what happens if we were to sort all this like this. Now, a typical scenario, you might have hundreds, maybe thousands of names in here, and there you might have one or two of them, three of them, four of them maybe, with leading spaces or space, and you don't see a problem at all until you happen to sort the data. So, from the data tab, I'm going to click the AZ button to sort this list. And now I see, of course, what's happening. Watanaki here is preceded by a few spaces. Harvey, few spaces. Fox, uh, maybe only one, but we see the problem in terms of sorting. These are not alphabetized because of the entries there. Let me undo that. We have trailing spaces. Do we have a trailing space here? So when you double click in a cell, you might see one if it is after the character. Not as much of problem, but again, that's a problem too. Let's clean these up with a function called trim. We see how that looks and you see what happens to multiple consecutive interspaces. They get reduced to one. So the trim functions tackles three issues and solves them. It removes leading spaces, it removes trailing spaces, and multiple consecutive interspaces. The way we see in rows two, three, four are reduced to a single space. Just like this. Now, these issues also pop up when we are trying to do matching. Jackie Fitzgerald there you can probably tell has a leading space but again in a list of data and when you are doing the same function or you are applying the same function to multiple cells that's not always so obvious suppose we try to match up this name with the data in column a equal match we are looking at this data here in d2 comma and we want to see if we can find it over in column a it needs to be an exact match so we put in zero and what happens we don't find it. but let's trim the function let's use trim right here in front of the d2 left parenthesis right parenthesis and then enter now we do find it it's in the 10th position that of course means it is in the 10th row since we are looking in the entire column a there now i'm going to make some other changes here i will put in multiple spaces here between the comma and the j the trim function still doesn't stop. So I will click at the end here, double click, few more spaces at the end, trim continues to work all along. So now when you are working with functions like this too, if you want to know the value of portion of a function or formula, you can highlight just that portion of it, press the F9 key. And as I'm doing right now, that's the real content of D2, as we see it. The trim function will deal with spaces, so as I press Ctrl Z here and then highlight trim, left parenthesis, D2, right parenthesis. What is that equivalent to? So once again, I will press the F9 key. And so we see what's happened here. The trim functions has reduced their data to this look here. No extraneous spaces, so it works. Now we should be able to try this with Maria Lopez too. I'm going to drag this down. That does not work. So now I'm going to double click over there in this cell. I don't see a trailing space. There is only one space there. There is no leading spaces. Why is not that working? This is the question. Well, could it be that there is an empty space over here? Maria Lopez is in row 9. I'm going to double click in there and the click outside to the right. Yes, there is a trailing space. So that's going to be a little bit trickier we might have to rely on an array formula here in this example here although we could use trim we don't necessarily need it here 
But how do we trim the cells that we are looking at? We can do this if we use an array formula. So making this column wider so we can see it better. We are going to double click in here and use the function trim for the entire entries in column A like this. So now we are about to compare one by one that named Lopez, comma, space Maria with the entries in column A. But not just the entries as we see them, the trimmed version of these. And we should be able to find this now. Still did not find it. And what's the difference? It's an array formula. We must press Ctrl, Shift, Enter. And you might have seen this in the previous part on array formulas. Now it works. It's in the ninth position. But again, at the core of this, we could not have achieved it without using the trim function to clean up the data. Now, when you have the time and you have got lists with issues like this, problems with spaces, use the trim function like we are seeing here, copy it all the way down the column. And then when you are finished, take all this data and it could be a huge amount. It could be a whole column maybe. We can break this on top of the old data with the right mouse button. So I am holding down the right mouse button now as I am dragging an edge of the data left toward onto column A. And as I release the right mouse button here, copy here is values only that cleans up the data. Double click behind any of these and we won't see any trailing spaces. We don't see any leading spaces and we don't see any multiple spaces between characters. Any trailing space behind Mario Lopez? Nope, not at all. This data is clean and we don't need this anymore. We use the trim function to clean up data. So it is widely used these days because many times we are getting data from other sources. And although often it is appreciated, from time to time, we do have problems with those spaces and Trim gets rid of them all. Lecture 11, Tutorial 4. In Excel, there is a function called concatenate and there is also a capability referred to as concatenation. Both of them are a bit tongue twisters too, aren't they? So let's start with this idea here. We have got names in column A, first names, then last names, then middle initials for some people, but not always. And we would like to put these together in such a way that we can sort the data. So we would like to gather the last name, then a comma and a space, then the first name and a space, then the middle initial and where necessary even appeared. So we can do this in a couple of ways. The technique I am using is often referred to as concatenation, but it does not involve the function concatenate as I am doing it here. Equal, get the data from cell B2. The ampersand symbol by the number seven key means end. It is as if we were saying, let's get the word baker and and within double quotes. Let's put in a comma and a space. So we want to see B-A-K-E-R space and the first name Mark. And after that, another space, separate the space from the middle initial and after that space, get the middle initial. Now we might want a period behind this if there is a middle initial. So for the moment, we are not dealing with that. Let's think about that for a moment. But complete this entry and copy this down the column. You see what is happening. When there is no middle initial, the code is still grabbing the data from. For example, C3, even though it's empty. So it does not hurt. So we have these entries here. Now we could have done the same thing with the function called concatenate. So I will do that over here. In fact, I will put it right here and then we will show them both as functions equal concatenate long function there it is right there and you can tape it into place now longer in one sense but shorter in another concatenate says okay let's start with what it is we want to pull together here that's b2 and now what do we want we don't have to put in that and symbol the ampersand and we put in comma and now we want to get the data from the first name that's a2 after that another double quotes and finally the data from c2 same thing we see over here now i'm gonna move this one up here just temporarily so we can compare the two i will press ctrl plus tilde so we can see both functions the shortcut ctrl plus tilde not using the shift key exposes formulas shows the formulas so here we see the two side by side 
concatenate is longer but maybe it is a little bit easier to read it's just a question of how familiar you are with the function or the technique we get the same answers here same answers same results so i will move this back now a feature called flash fill has limited some of the need for text functions as we have seen in the previous parts as well but in the example here let's try this with flash fill i am going to right click column d insert a new column here baker mark s now flash fill is found on the data tape in the ribbon there it is right here flash fill that works just the same as what we saw over here and we see what happens here we have got extra periods all over the place but how can we put in the periods otherwise suppose we want to do this with functions so let me undo this and actually delete column d and go back to how we use the function here the concatenation techniques we can insert an if function right here to see if this cell here is blank and we can use a function called is blank so what we would like to do is to pull together the last name that's out of column b the first name out of column a so what do we want to do if cell c2 is blank we want to put in here nothing double quotes that's a blank but if it is not blank in other words if there is a middle initial there we want to grab that middle initial and put a period behind it and that should work enter let's see what's happening here there we will copy down the column so every time there is a middle initial we see it now one other do we have any extra spaces here let's look at this it is hard to tell until we turn these into their results it looks as there could be a trailing space here so the other issue of concern here is once we have copied this what we want to do remember it's all up and down the column here we can copy this to itself using a technique i have used in a number of other tutorials in this course and it's in one of the short tips at the beginning too i am going to use the right mouse button and drag this data temporarily either up down or right left but simply right back on top of itself using the right mouse button and then copy here as values only in effect this means throw away the formulas keep the results so here we are and as i double click behind these looks like there is a trailing space now we could use trim what i will do here is press ctrl z and go back to where these were formulas again now they are all formulas again and i will simply change the function here to include the function trim the problem here the potential long range problem is that when you have got entries like this and you are making comparisons with data in other locations matches and v lookups will fail if you have got a trailing space in one location and not in the other so i will make the change here for all of these and they are all done and then i will copy these again remember using the right mouse button this time i will just drag it rightward into column e and then right back on top of itself letting go of the right mouse button copy here as will use only as i double click here behind sheila hansen hansen there is no trailing space and there is none down here and so these and so these names are in good shape using concatenation techniques remember we can use the techniques of pulling together data by using the ampersand or using the function called concatenate we are looking at a worksheet called concat text join and those are the names of two new function that have been added to excel in the earlier version if you have seen an early tutorial how to use the concatenate function you might be wondering why there is another function with the name concate very familiar and if you have updated excel and if you go to the formula tab on the ribbon and choose text you will see the function called concate but what's happened to concatenate it is still available even though we don't see it in the list look at the description concatenates a list or a range of text strings same description that concatenate had further down the list you will see the other function we are about to talk called text join concatenates a list or a range of text strings using a delimiter 
Let's first take a look at this worksheet and the data in column A through E. We have got some current products listed here, some of the items we sell and they have IDs we have using for years. We are going to create new IDs based on the date that the product was introduced, the color of the product, the location where it was made and the size. And we would like to pull these together just by bringing each of these characters together. And to the right, here we see how this is being done using the function called concatenate, which still works. That's a good deal of typing to get this all in one place. By the way, to the right, I am simply using a function called formulate formula text. Function called formula text that displays that. And right here in cell G3, you can see on the right what's going on there different way of pulling together the information. Now I'm using this also on row 2. So we are seeing the same numbers but here we are using concatenate. It takes a lot longer to get here because we want to put a dash between each one of these. Nothing wrong with that. However, it does work. But let's try this a little bit differently. Would not it be better if we could somehow take a function like this and skip all the ambassons. Why not just concatenate all the data from P2 through E2? Well, if we were to try this and I will try it up here equal concatenate. It is available if you start to type this way. We could tape it into place. Now I am going to highlight these four cells and press enter. And what do we get? It does not work. So we can't do that so easily. But uh, it sure would not be would be a lot more efficient if we could do this. Well, we can do it with the function called cancate and there it is and I will display over to the right although we can also see it by double clicking that's what the function is actually looking like so we see how the two compare we are doing the same thing here it is obvious that concate does this much much more efficiently so now how about this idea could not we do something similar here with concatenate remember what we are doing here we are pulling together each of those items with a dash along with it. There should be some way to do this, but there is not in concatenate to do this more efficiently. But there is another function called text join and text join begins with the idea that we have got the delimiter, for example, a dash, double quote, dash, double quote. And of course, it could be any number of different kinds of delimiters. You might want to choose here, there, comma, the next choice say, true to ignore empty cells. We don't have any of those in our example. But nevertheless, there could be time to what do you want to happen when it is true, ignore the empty cells. And I think that's a choice most people would want here. In other words, don't include a space in the middle of all this. You can put in the word true here or simply put in a comma to ignore their choice. Now, how about the text that we want? We are looking again at row 2, dragging across here and it. And over here, I will copy the formula down so we can compare them. It's pretty obvious that second entry there, the one in row 4, here is a lot easier than concatenate and concatenate and or concat has the possibility of using the delimiter here. So this is pretty effective here, the way we see text join is working. We want to gather all that information together just like this. If one of these entries here and I will simply wipe it out is blank, delete and that's an empty cell. You see what text join does to it. In other words, it only puts in the dash there. It does not pick up the data or add in additional delimiter. You see what's happening there. Here, since we now have an empty cell, concatenate is putting a dash in because you specifically needed to say that, as I did here in the description. So I think you can sense by using these two functions, text join in some situations, concat in others, and things are going to be a lot simpler. And we can also make the case for saying anytime you can use concatenate, you can use concat. So eventually, this function will no longer be on our radar. We won't need it anymore. Everything we can do with concatenate, we can do with concat and concat furthermore also allow us to do the groupings like this that would really be handy in concatenate. So there is a good reason for saying why is not concatenate here anymore? Well, because we don't 
really need it. Now again, not trying to sound contradictory, it still works and you can still use it. But uh, you will see over time you don't need to use it. So two new functions that really make it simpler and easier to pull together data from different sources. And think of a situation down here, a different example here. We probably want to use text join here. Let's pull together these names, maybe in the same order, maybe not, and use text join. And how about the delimiter simply being a space? So a space between double quotes, comma, ignore empty cells. Yes, we do want to do that because we do have some people without middle initials. So we can either pop in the word true or simply put in a comma. And what data are we looking about here? This data right here. So I will complete the entry. Looks just great. And what happens with the others as we copy this down the column? Much easier. And so the people without middle initials does not look unusual at all as we look at the data here. So a valuable addition to the set of text functions, this text join feature that we are seeing displayed here. And earlier, we saw how can get work as well. Two additions to the Excel arsenal of text functions right here in the new Excel versions. Now in this uh, worksheet called proper students, I have got a list of names in column A and nothing really wrong with them except they are all uppercase. It tends to be easier to read the data when only the first letters are capitalized and that's typically how we write or if we are even using cursive or we capital people's names but only the first letter. So how do we make a change here? On the formula step of the ribbon, under text functions, there are three functions related to upper and lower case and also one for what we would call proper case. Here is lower, it converts all letters in the text string to lower case. Sure enough, we have got upper, opposite of course, converts them to upper case. And then there is proper, it converts a text string to proper case. The first letter in each word becomes upper case, the other letters are lower case. And by the way, to extend this definition a little bit, any letter that follows punctuation or a space will be capitalized. So as we look at that list to the left, the B in O'Brien will capitalize if we use this function called proper, equal proper, and we see what is happening. I will copy this down the column and we see it is happening in all cases. Notice also the name in row 8, Morgan Jones, happening. I hyphenated name. The J is capitalized. I mentioned earlier that the B in O'Brien is capitalized. The first T in McDonald is not. Not built into Excel is any way to recognize the Mac beginning here. So the D is not capitalized. I doubt if you would have typed Mac space Donald in the original list, but if you had, then the D would be capitalized but then there would be a space there as well too. So there is no real workaround for that other than to make some changes manually here. But we see how quick and easy this is to do. And eventually, in a list like this, with it being highlighted, if you wanted to replace the data to the left with all this data highlighted, you could simply with the right mouse button drag the top edge or right, it makes no difference, left edge even, drag it onto the old data with the right mouse button. Copy here is values only. And when we are performing other kinds of calculations or concatenations, we can also use the proper function. So I might want to pull these names together. And if I did, I possibly would use this construction E2 and double quotes comma and mark in cell D2. I want this look uh, mark maker. Along the way, I want to use proper fine we use proper so we can certainly use it together and over here in column h those numbers look better these part numbers would look better if the letters were all capitalized equal upper and you are much less likely to use the function called lower for lowercase but there certainly could be uses for the two upper and we are simply changing the letters to the uppercase 
and now most of these features can be done with a relatively new flash feature which i have mentioned in the previous parts so if we type this in like this first of all right now it is proper nothing with that and that gets the job done but delete that what if we simply type in baker mark i will press ctrl enter and on the data tab of the ribbon i will choose flash fill excel does the job perfect we don't need any formulas we don't have to worry about copying and paste and back over here in column b well i have cleaned up the data here but if i wanted to change the names and go uppercase on this i could certainly do that but uh, what if i delete the data and somehow or other i decide uh, you know what i really want here is this and i will go to the flash fill right there and excel does the job you can image the different issues here and by the way there was a leading space in front of mark look what happened there so it is not perfect in a sense you could say it was perfect here it did exactly what it should do with the data based on what is being shown so that feature from time to time that flash fill feature may be the way to go in place of some of these text functions but from time to time i think you will find useful proper upper and lower as you are working with maybe smaller amounts of data right in excel dear students excel has two similar functions one called replace one called substitute both of them allow us to replace characters within text strings they are very similar and there is also a command on the home tab far right button find and select called replace now unfortunately adding to a bit of confusion here this replace command which we will look at in a bit is very similar to the substitute function not the replace function actually so let's first look at the two functions the replace function allow us to replace information based on a position we need to replace the fifth character in these codes with the letter x the replace function all text refers to this location right here looking in cell a3 comma and starting in the fifth position comma we want to replace one character one with another character or characters possibly in this case just one character if it is a text entry it must be within double quotes x double com quote we have our answer and there it is the fifth character as we look to the number to the left is a dash it's been replaced with an x in the next example down it is a zero is about to be replaced with an x as i copy these downward so in all these cases here we are looking at the ability of excel to replace a single character with another character but sometimes we want to replace a character with multiple characters that's what we want to do off to the right I am going to copy this formula over into cell E3 and then scroll rightward. What we want to do here is uh, to replace the 8th character but not just with one character, with three characters actually. So as we look at the date here, the 8th character is a dash, the one after the edge and before the 8. We want to replace the 8th character and where we are replacing one character but we are replacing it with three other characters. USA, enter and we see the result in place of the dash we are seeing usa our husa87 here too double click copy this down the column so we are using the replace function here to replace one character with three characters now as we look at the substitute function the first thing we are going to do here possibly could be done better with the replace command let's show the function first equal substitute and when it pops up in your list since it is a relatively long so as you see it here you can just tab it into place if you wish what are we doing first we are looking at the text in cell a10 comma now this is not based on position it is based on content actually so i would like to replace the dashes that's dash i want to replace this with nothing double quotes double quotes there is an option with this function to replace just the first one or just the second one or just the third one any number we choose and if we do nothing else this will replace all dashes see what happens no dashes there copy it down here what do we see no dashes substitute function works just fine now if we did not need to use this or didn't want to use this we could have done this perhaps more efficiently simply by highlighting the data in question and on the home tab going to find and select and choosing replace 
what do we want to do here we want to replace a dash so you might have to put it in the replace panel is completely empty it will stay empty and we are about to replace all dashes with nothing we were about to see eight dashes disappear replace all all done we made eight replacements so you see what's happening there in column a now what we cannot do with the feature though is be selective about which one of the axes or which one of the dashes in this case we want it to have replaced so let's show how that might work i'm going to copy this use of substitute here over to the right substitute triple x just for the second dash so here we want to substitute looking at cell d10 we want to. for every time we see a dash here put in nothing although this time we want to put in three x's now early example was nothing but there is two dashes in there and maybe we only want to do this for the second dash too so again looking at the function we are looking in cell d10 just to the left we want to find a dash and when we do replace it with triple x if there is more than one dash and there is in this case we want to replace only the second dash there might be two dashes five dashes whatever we are only replacing the second dash with n triple x and we see what happened there as i copy this down the column we will see the same kind of thing here too and similarly we can do the same sort of things here and replace all the dashes with an underscore i will drag this down here substitute make a change replace a dash with what the underscore character and there it is but i want to do this for all dashes so i don't put in the comma two nothing at all there so all dashes will be replaced with underscore let's see how that works and over to the left and by now you could probably figure out this one how do we remove only the first dash let's just take this use of substitute and copy down here make a slight change we want to replace dash with nothing but we only want to do this for the first occurrence one and see what happens so different functions here substitute and replace and they are similar and yet different and don't forget there is that command sequence to that many times or at least in situations where you want to remove or change all characters very analogous to the substitute function a bit of confusion there maybe because replace is closest to or most like the substitute function As you know, Excel has a number of functions categorized as text functions. If you go to the formula tab in the ribbon and choose text, you see quite a few entries right here. A lot of these allow us to manipulate information at the character level. In column A, we have got a bunch of part numbers here. Now it turns out that some of the codes here are important. The letter G maybe is meaningful and we simply out of a potentially large list want to find those part numbers that have the letter G in them. Maybe that relates to the size of the item or the color something like that. Now we could search for that character with a function called find. Begins with what it is we are looking for and we want to use double quotes here. What are we looking for here? The letter G. Where are we looking? In cell A2. And there could be times when you don't want to begin searching from the leftmost edge. You might want to start, for example, at the third character. That's pretty rare. But nevertheless, you can do that too with a comma. And then put in a 3 if you wanted to start looking at the third character. And then write word. This case, we want to look from the beginning. It is not found. So we get an answer like this. I will copy this down the column by double clicking. We found a G here and we found a G right here too. But notice that in row six, there is a G as well. And here is the formula. Why are not we finding it? The find function is case sensitive. Remember that we are looking for a capital G. And if we type it this way, no matter whether they are upper or lower case, we use the function called search. It makes no difference here whether we use an uppercase G or a lowercase G. We will find all occurrences of G once we copy this. And you can see what's happening here. Find the G no matter what. And we see it there too. So based on that, sometimes that's all we wanted to know. We move on doing something else. But at other times, we might want to, from that location, pick up information that follows it and sometimes perhaps we are looking at a list 
like this. We might want to pull out information from the middle. Here is a function called mid. Now when it comes to text functions, there is a new feature introduced earlier in Excel 23 called flash fill. That may limit the need for using some of the functions we are about to show you here. For example, right here in column D, here I want to pull out the state name. Now we can do this by way of a function called mid, M-I-D. We would first have to identify though where the comma is. But we could try this in a different way. I'm going to type CO and then go to this feature. It's found on the data tape. And after completing the entry, flash will. Now it looks like flash will works, but it works here in a way we would not want it. I was thinking of the state code here. Apparently, Excel thought that I was referring to the first two letters of the city. Now I'm going to undo that with control Z. What if I type OH right here and highlight both of these? How about flash fill now? Is it going to work or not? Looks like it does not work here. It's not a foolproof feature. Will a third one help? Uh, so let's put in KY here. Highlight all of these. Flash will see the pattern now. No, still doesn't. So you can't exactly count on that. Now I would imagine if that the city name here were different. Suppose I make this a B Denver and get rid of this data here and type in CO. I already typed it there. So I will click flash fill now and automatically it happens. So that's going to be a great feature. So how about using text functions here? This does work as we see here. So what if the city were columbined? We did not see it work before. Let's approach this from a different angle. The function called mid MID, think of the word middle, allow us to pull information out or copy information from a location based on a position. Now, if we can find out where the comma is and we can with this function that we saw earlier called find, find comma and where we are we looking? We are looking in cell C2. We find it. It's in the seventh position, seventh character from the left. You can see that pretty clearly. Armed um, with that information, we then we can then use a function called mid. Think of the word middle. We are looking in cell C2, comma, start number. If we start at position seven, we will be picking up the comma and the space. We want to start where the state code begins. So we want to add two to this. That's where we want to begin copying information comma and how many characters do we want to copy to for the state code we have our answer this way now after showing you flash fill you might say well why would we ever use this you certainly can use it in other context and finding characters like we found the comma here this will put you in a good shape for pulling out information from other kinds of lists Flash fill does not always work. Another situation where it might not work, by the way, would be if we had some unusual spacing over here, something like that. Now, this may or may not cause a problem. So I will put uh, some spaces up here as well too and see what happens. This may or may not cause a problem, but it could. So I will try this right here. CO and press enter. Go up to flash fill and looks like it did work here but again remember there will be times when it does not work and if you wanted to isolate the city name here we would uh, probably have some problems and possibly with the zip code too but nevertheless what we saw earlier here and i will press a few control c's using these functions like we see here can be helpful keep in mind too that there could be times when you want to extract data from a part number over here Maybe these part numbers are positional. It could mean something like the first two characters. Maybe have something to do with the code or the size of the item or where it was made or some kind of a pricing structure. Suppose we want to pull out data from the fourth, fifth and sixth position here. So equal mid. We are looking here in cell A2 and we want to start copying data from the fourth position and we want to pick up three characters from there. 
So looking at the data to the left, we will come up with entry K90. That's what we have got. We are starting in the fourth position and copying three characters and then copying that down the column. Perhaps we see these kinds of entries. We can do this with text. We can do these with numbers. So it is easily available. So the mid function MID, think of the word middle and earlier we saw the find function are often used together sometimes separately and both of them give us tools for extracting and getting to information inside of cells.